Breastfeeding is the natural way to feed your baby, but it can take a bit of time to get it right. This film may not be able to answer all the questions you may have, but through the stories of three mums, you'll learn how to overcome some early hurdles and where to find help. Thomasina is happily breastfeeding her second baby, Sadie. But first time round, with her son Jay, things didn't go smoothly. Uh, yeah. And after a few days, she began to find breastfeeding painful. I got terribly sore nipples. And um, if I'm honest, it was a very, those first three weeks were very, very, very difficult for me. Um, because I um, found this deep seated need to make the breastfeeding work. And I didn't know how to get the help. In the end, Thomasina called the hospital and was put in touch with a breastfeeding specialist who offered to meet her for some one-to-one -one support. I think I burst into tears at that point because I was, I had felt so helpless and so out of control with it. It was really only on, only once I was able to track down some help that I felt that there was a bit of a, a bit of light at the end of the tunnel. And then, with the help, things really improved quite quickly. She showed me how to latch him on essentially and how to wait for that moment when he opens his mouth wide and all these very small things that make a huge, huge difference in terms of breastfeeding. Like Thomasina, Lowry is enjoying breastfeeding her new baby Miriam. But with her first child, she encountered challenges. She got mastitis, a treatable inflammation of the breast. My initial um, feeling naturally was to stop breastfeeding on it because it hurt. I went to the GP really. He did say, you know, you need to keep on feeding from that, from the affected breast. And to be honest, the more I fed from it, the easier it got and the mastitis did go. Come on in, boys. Larry got over mastitis and continued breastfeeding, but then she got it again. I thought, well, there must be something not quite right. So I did phone um, the breastfeeding coordinator in the local hospital and she came out and she was a very big help. Shall we go in there? She was the one who taught me how to position properly and um, with just a little bit of help, I didn't have it again. As with many mums, Thomasina and Lowry experienced difficulties because their babies weren't attaching well at the breast. If your baby doesn't attach properly, she may not take enough breast into her mouth. Your nipple will rub against the hard part of her mouth towards the front and you may get sore. Your baby may not be able to take enough milk from the breast. She may seem hungry all the time or not gain weight. Also, a buildup of milk in your breasts can be a cause of other problems, like mastitis. You can avoid these kinds of difficulties by ensuring your baby attaches well at the breast. To do this, bring your baby's nose directly opposite the nipple. Then, let her head tip back a little so that her top lip can brush against your nipple. This should make her open her mouth. When her mouth is wide open, bring her quickly to the breast with her head back and chin leading. Your baby can then take a large mouthful of breast, not just the nipple. The breast will be drawn deep into her mouth, so your nipple will go all the way back to the soft part of her mouth. Your baby will be able to take all the milk she needs and you won't get sore. Sometimes, a baby may seem reluctant to attach at the breast. You may find it helpful, like at birth, to lie back, give your baby plenty of skin-to-skin -skin contact and let him find his own way to the breast. With your baby attached well, breastfeeding will be comfortable and enjoyable. I find it very emotionally close to my babies when I'm, when I'm breastfeeding them. It's kind of quiet time for you and your baby and it's, it's kind of time where I kind of stare at her and get to know her a bit better. I think a lot of women do give up after they've had mastitis, but if you can get through it and learn why you've had it, then you should be okay. Lots of mums have problems and difficulties in the first few days. The baby can be feeding and they think, well, that's great, but if it's not effectively attached, then the mum might end up getting pain or damage, or the baby is going to get unsettled because it's not getting as much milk. Many hospitals have infant feeding specialists, like Anne, who can help with breastfeeding. First-time mum, Salvana, has got sore nipples and has come to the hospital with her three-week-old to get some support. 
you have a little crack around the base of the nipple, mainly mm -hmm. at the top there. And the reason that's happening is because when the baby's sucking on the breast, she doesn't have enough breast tissue in her mouth. So it's very important when the baby goes on that we get enough breast in her mouth so that there isn't that stretching of the nipple and yeah. the nipple's far back in her mouth. Yeah. There are many positions you can use for feeding. Salvana is comfortable with her baby in the so-called rugby hold, with her body supported under her arm. Anne is helping her ensure her baby attaches well at the breast. You want to have the baby lying very, very close to you, your arm along the baby's back, supporting the baby's back right up to the neck, but not touching the baby's head. You want to be sure that the baby's body and neck and head are all in a nice straight line so that the baby's not having to twist around to get to the breast. That'll make it uncomfortable and also difficult for a baby to swallow milk straight down into his tummy. Mm -hmm. So keep the baby nice and close like that. Now, the most important thing when the baby's in this position is to have the baby with the nose level to your nipple, okay? Then you wait for the baby to open the mouth. Now, sometimes babies move around quite a lot, but you just need to be very patient, keep your breast still and let the baby move. Now, keep your nipple aiming up her nose and just think about her chin getting in underneath the breast. That's excellent, right? And then quickly in, that was good. Now, she should quickly relax and go into those lovely big deep sucks that she's doing where her chin's moving right against the breast. Mm -hmm. That's just letting the milk flow into the ducts and then she mm -hmm. has a wee rest and then keeps going again. It is worth mm -hmm. making sure everything is there and this is the best it's ever been. Mm -hmm. And if it isn't, mm -hmm. detach the baby, take her off and start again, mm -hmm. rather than putting up with it and thinking I'll, I'll get it better mm -hmm. next time. Uh -huh. If breastfeeding feels painful, then take the baby off the breast and try for a better attachment. It's important not to pull or force her. This will hurt. You can do it safely by putting the tip of your little finger in the corner of the baby's mouth to break the suction gently. She's in a beautiful position. You've done very well. You're, you're really doing very well, you know. Thank All you. the work you're doing is your work. <laughs> I feel um, much more confident about doing things, changing things that I'm doing if they're, if they're wrong. Um, and I, I think that... I knew that if I if I kept coming back for help, that I could I would get there, and I feel that that's that's the corner that I'm turning, that I will get there, and and that's how I feel after this morning, that I'm definitely going to get there. As our three mums have found, it's important to seek expert support when you need it, especially if you do experience persistent pain or other symptoms, and there's plenty of support available. In the early weeks and months of your baby's life, you'll be seeing your community midwife and health visitor who will be able to help. You'll be given their contact numbers after your baby's born. Keep them in a safe place. There are also various charities which offer support for breastfeeding. And there are helplines, such as the National Breastfeeding Helpline, where you can speak to a highly trained breastfeeding counsellor. The names, numbers and web addresses of these charities and other useful organisations can be found on the Best Beginnings website or click on the Where Can I Go For Help option on your menu. Across the UK, there are also breastfeeding support groups where you can meet other mums and get help from healthcare professionals or breastfeeding counsellors. You can find details of what's available locally from your health visitor or from the breastfeeding support charities. We do the baby cafe here every Monday and um, the mums come along and get help for breastfeeding and support. Coming here has really helped, meeting other mothers, making friends, everyone's in the same position, learn a lot from other people. Women do come across hurdles and, and you just have to sort of work through them and sort of, uh, you know, just persevere. It is perseverance and once you get it, you just think, wow, it's great. Yeah. With perseverance and good support, Thomasina was able to overcome her early challenges and enjoy breastfeeding her children. It was a time for me to kind of get to know my children and for them to get to know me and it feels very personal and it just feels beautiful really in a way. Hi Jay, have a lovely day at nursery. After her own experiences, Thomasina wanted to help other mothers. So, she trained as a peer supporter and now visits local mums Hi to there. offer them one-to-one -one support. Hi. Hi. Hi there, my name's Thomasina. Sometimes a little bit of reassurance is all mothers need. Other times, Thomasina can see that some practical support will make all the difference. Yeah. Don't let her stay at the breast if it's feeling a bit sore, if you know that really her mouth isn't yeah. open wide enough. The peer support service isn't available everywhere, but it's growing across the UK. 
So we did this earlier. What's happening here? Like Thomasina, these young mothers have discovered the benefits of breastfeeding and are also training to become peer supporters in order to help others. Yeah, when I had an antenatal visit, um, the midwife just assumed I bottle feed because of my age, and that sort of made me really decide to breastfeed. Not a lot of young mums breastfeed, and where all my friends were pregnant as well, they didn't really decide to breastfeed, but I felt really proud of myself that I was breastfeeding. With the right help, you can overcome most hurdles and go on to enjoy breastfeeding your baby happily and easily. And even though I had all these problems, I'm glad that I didn't change my mind and not breastfeed because the benefits it's had for her and the bonding it's had for the both of us has just been brilliant. I was always brought up with women who breastfed. Back home, it's normal, it's what you do. It's so be beneficial and it's something that I, I recommend to every person that's having a baby. Don't be afraid to ask for help or support if you need it. It can make such a difference. You can ask your midwife and health visitor and you'll find contact details for other places to go for support by pressing the where to go for help button on the main menu.